Yesterday we finished reading an overview of the Noble Apple Park. Today we're going to continue with the third section of this chapter, Good Friendship. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling among the Sakyans where there was a town of the Sakyans named Nagaraka. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Venerable Sir, this is half of the spiritual life. That is good friendship, good companionship, and good comradeship. The Buddha quickly replied, Not so, Ananda, not so, Ananda. This is the entire spiritual life, Ananda. That is good friendship good companionship, good comradeship. When a monk has a good friend, a good companion, and a, a good comrade, it is to be expected that he will develop and cultivate the noble effort path. Footnotes number eight. SPK, in the commentary, when he was in seclusion under the thought, this practice of a monk succeeds for one who relies on good friends and on his own filial effort thus half depends on good friends and half on one's own filial effort. Okay. Let's take a look here real. Okay, feel here means having characterized by strength. So here, Ananda's point was, well, when I was a retreat, you know, half of it depends on, uh, thanks to the the, the monks and you know, to the good friendship that Ananda has, but half of it is due to his own effort. That's why Panama Ananda said, Good friendship is half of the spiritual life. But here, the Buddha tells him, no, <laughs> not so. Good friendship is actually the whole, the entire of spiritual life. How is that so? Let's read out the final out sister again. Would you like to continue? And how, Ananda, does a monk with a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path? Here, Ananda, a monk develops right view, which is based upon seclusion, dispassion, and cessation. Maturing in release, he develops right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, which is based upon seclusion dispassion and cessation, maturing in release. It is in this way, Ananda, that a monk with a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, develops and cultivates the Noble Eightfold Path. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Sakya. So, because of a good friend here, a monk develops right view, based on seclusion, dispassion, maturing, and release. And then right intention, right space, all the way to right concentration. It is in this way, a good companion develops, cultivates the noble level path. This the Shaw Ming, would you like to continue? By the following method too, Ananda, it may be understood how the entire spiritual life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. By relying upon me as a good friend, Ananda, being subject to birth, are freed from birth, being subject to... Sorry, I can't see. Being subject to... Sorry, I can't see that word. At the top, uh, aging? 
aging are freed from aging, being subject to death are freed from death, being subject to sorrow, lamentation, pain, dejection, and despair are freed from sorrow, lamentation, pain, dejection, and despair. By this method, Ananda, it may be understood how the entire spiritual life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. Hmm. Thanks, Sister Shomi. It is from Samyutta Nikaya, 45.2. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. The second way, how the entire spiritual life is a good friendship, is by relying entirely on the Buddha. By relying upon the Buddha as a good friend. Why? Because the Buddha himself has been freed from birth, freed from aging, freed from death, and freed from sorrow, lamentation, pain, dejection, and despair. So this is a short shota about the good spiritual friendship. And I would say probably this group too is also a good friendship. Every morning, encourage each other to motiv uh, meditate and read the Dharma. So this is a one example how a good friendship can help us in our spiritual life. The next sutta is a very long sutta, so we will probably need a few days to complete this, but let's let's try to read. Sister Akim, would you like to read? For the graduated training, thus have I heard on one occasion, the blessed one was living at Sabati in Jeta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's park. Now, on that occasion, the Brahmin Janusoni was driving out of Sabati in the middle of the day, in an all-white chariot drawn by white mares, he saw the wanderer Pilotika come, coming in the distance and asked him, Now, where is Master Vachayana coming from in the middle of the day? Sir, I am coming from the presence of aesthetic Gotama. What does Master Vachayana think of the aesthetic Gotama's lucid city? Of wisdom, he's wise, is he not? Yes, sir. Sir, who am I to know the ascetic Gautama's ludicity of wisdom? One would surely have to be his equal to know the ascetic Gautama's ludicity of wisdom. Master Wachayana praises the ascetic Gautama with high praise indeed. Sir, who am I to praise the ascetic Gautama the Aesthetic Gautama is praised by the praise as best among devas and humans. What reasons does Master Vachayana see that he has such firm confidence in the Aesthetic Gautama? Thanks, Sister Akim. This sets the background for the conversation to come. Uh, conversation to come. So this is similar to how we, <laughs> when we talk to each other, Oh, this Shifu, very good. His class I attended 10 days war, the retreat, super power, very strict. And I gained a lot. Uh, then the, the other person asked, Oh, why do you have such confidence in this Shifu? Oh, because he explains well, he's very humorous, and yeah, all the stuff. Uh, this is sometimes the conversation we have with our fellow <laughs> spiritual friends. Uh, in fact, actually, I got introduced by many um, venerables, which now I still follow yeah, by my spiritual friend as well. Ajahn Brahmali, I was introduced by. Bhikkhu Analeo, I was introduced by. Yeah. A friend of mine, at least in the past. <laughs> okay. Sister Billy, would you like to continue? Sir, suppose a wise elephant hunter were to enter an elephant wood 
and were to see in the elephant wood a big elephant's footprint, long in extent and broad across. He would come to, conclude, to the conclusion, indeed, this is a big bull elephant. So too, when I saw four footprints of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusion, the Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. The Dharma is well responded by the Blessed One. The Sangha is practicing the good way. What are the four? Okay. Thanks, Sister Billy. So here, Master Vachayana used an, a simile. A wise elephant hunter were to enter and see the big elephant's footprint and then he saw <laughs> four footprints of the ascetic Gautama. And that's how he come to the conclusion the Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. The Dhamma is well responded by the Blessed One. The Sangha is practicing the good way. What are these four? Sister Chai Kwan, would you like to continue? Sir, I have seen here <clears throat> certain learned nobles who were clever, knowledgeable about the doctrines of others. As sharp as hair-splitting marksmen, they wander about, as it were, demolishing the views of others with their sharp wits. When they hear the ascetic Gotama will visit such and such a village or town, they formulate a question thus. We will go to the ascetic Gotama and ask him this question. If he is asked like this, he will answer like this. And so we will ref refute his doctrine in this way. And if he is asked like that, he will answer like that. And so we will refute his doctrine in that way. They hear the ascetic Gotama has come to visit such and such a village or town. They go to the ascetic Gotama, and the ascetic Gotama instructs, urges, rouses, and gladdens them with a talk on the Dharma. After they have instructed, urged, roused, and gladdened by the ascetic Gotama with talk on the Dharma, they do not so much as ask him the question. So how should they refute his doctrine? In actual fact, they become his disciples. When I saw this first footprint of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusion, the Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. The Dharma is well expounded by the Blessed One. The Sangha is practicing the good way. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Chaikwan. And this... It reminds me of a Ip Man movie. <laughs> Someone tries to defeat Ip Man by fighting, fighting him, but he got defeated. <laughs> he ran away. The next day, he comes back with more people. <laughs> all these people got defeated by Ip Man again, and then all these people becomes Ip Man's disciple. Learn kung fu from him. Learn kung fu from the best. <laughs> so in this way, very similar. They actually tried to debate the Buddha, the ascetic Gautama. <laughs> After that, they got defeated badly. And then in the end, here, in actual fact, they become his disciples. So this is the first footprint of the ascetic Gautama. Okay. The first one is learn nobles. Let me highlight this. Okay. And the second one, okay. I'll continue reading. Again, I have seen certain learned Brahmins who were clever. In actual fact, they too become his disciples. When I saw this second footprint of the ascetic Gotama, I came to the conclusion. The blessed one. Is perfectly enlightened. Again, I have seen certain learned householders who were clever. In actual fact, they too become his disciples. When I saw this third footprint of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusions. The Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. 
Again, I have seen certain learned ascetics who were clever. Uh, let me pause a bit. The second one is the learned Brahmins. The third one is learned householders. And the last one, the fourth, learned ascetics. So nobles, Brahmins, householders, ascetics. These four mix up with for the four footprints. They do not so much as ask him the question, so how should they refute his doctrine? In actual fact, they ask the ascetic Gautama to allow them to go forth from the household life into homelessness, and he gives them the going forth. Not long after they have gone forth, dwelling alone, withdrawn, diligent, ardent, and resolute, by realizing it for themselves with direct knowledge, the here and now enter upon and dwell in that supreme goal of the spiritual life, for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the household life into homelessness. They say thus, we were very nearly lost, we very nearly perished, for formerly we claimed that we were ascetics, though we were not really ascetics. We claimed that we were Brahmins, though we were not really Brahmins. We claimed that we were Arahants, though we were not really Arahants. But now we are ascetics, now we are Brahmins, now we are Arahants. When I saw this fourth footprint of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusion, the Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. When I saw these four footprints of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusion, the Blessed One is perfectly enlightened. The Dharma is well expounded by the Blessed One. The Sangha is practicing the good way. So this is how the Venerable explained to the Brahmin Janusoni how good the Buddha is. Okay. Sister Saikyan, would you like to continue? When this was said, the Brahmin Janusoni got down from his all white chariot, drawn by white mares, and arranging his upper robe on one shoulder, he extended his hands in reverential salutation toward the Blessed One and uttered this exclamation three times. Homage to the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one. Perhaps sometime or other, I might meet Master Gautama and have some conversation with him. Then the Brahmin Janasoni went to the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down to one side and related his entire conversation with the wanderer Pilotika. Thereupon, the Blessed One told him, At this point, Brahmin, the simile of elephant's footprint has not yet been completed in detail. As to how it is completed in detail, listen and attend carefully to what I shall say. Yes, sir, the Brahmin Janusoni replied. The Blessed One said this. Okay. Thanks, Thank Sister Thakin. Uh, this again, number eight. Uh, Brahmin Janusoni was uh, after hearing that, praising the Buddha with the three salutation. Homage to the Blessed One, the Arahant, the Perfectly United One, repeated three times. This is like what we chant every day in the morning, at the very beginning. Yeah. Namo Tassa, all the way to the end. Yeah. And this is also in today's conversation, how would this look like? Wow, this Shifu, power. I've got to attend his class. Ali Holio. 
And this is how I got introduced to many venerables too. Ajahn Viradamo, venerable to 10 children, even Bhikkhu Bodhi, and some other venerables you might attend the class to like Venerable Chunyin. I think some of you are attending her class. Very good. And then number nine, finally, the Brahmin Janusoni got to approach the Buddha and talk to him. Okay, maybe we read, we read one or two more. Sister Shomei, would you like to continue? Then the Brahmin Janusoni. Uh, number 10. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Brahm, Brahm, number 10. Yes. Brahmin, suppose an elephant hunter were to enter an elephant wood and were to see in the elephant wood a big elephant's with footprint, long in, the, long in extent and broad across. A wise elephant hunter would not yet come to the conclusion. Indeed, this is a big bull elephant. Why is that? In an elephant wood, there are some she-elephants that leave a big footprint, and this might be one of their footprints. He follows it and sees in the elephant wood a big elephant's footprint, long in extent and broad across, and some scrapings high up. A wise elephant hunter would not yet come to the conclusion, indeed, indeed this is a big full elephant, bull elephant. Why is that? In an elephant wood, there are tall she-elephants that have prominent teeth and leave a big footprint. And this might be one of their footprints. He follows it further and sees in the elephant wood a big elephant's footprint, long in extent and broad across, and some scrapings high up, and marks made by tusks. A wise elephant hunter would not yet come to the conclusion, indeed, this is a big, this is a big bull elephant. Why is that? In an elephant wood, there are tall she-elephants and have tusks and leave a big footprint. And this might be one of their footprints. He follows it further and sees in the elephant's foot a big wood, a big elephant's footprint, long in extent and broad across, and some scrapings high up, and marks made by the tusks and broken off branches. And he sees that big, he sees that bull elephant at the fruit of a tree or in the open, walking about, sitting or lying down. He comes to the conclusion, this is that big old elephant. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. So this paragraph is all about finding the big bull elephant. Yeah? Just looking at the footprints, don't come to the conclusion yet. Yeah? Because this could be other types of elephant. Only until you walk all the way, and then you actually see for yourself the big bull elephant. Then you can come to the conclusion this is that big bull elephant. Okay, let's read one more, Sister Aki. Would you like to continue? So, to Brahmin, here a Tathagata appears in the world, an Arahan, perfectly enlightened, perfect in true knowledge and conduct. Fortunate knower of the world, unsurpassed leader of persons to be tamed, teacher of devas and human, the enlightened one, the blessed one, having realized his with his own direct knowledge in the, this world with its devas, maras, and brahmas, this population with its aesthetics and brahmins, with its devas and humans, he makes it known to others. He teaches a Dharma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end. With the remaining, with the right meaning and expressions, he reveals a holy life that is perfectly complete and purified. Okay, thanks, Sister Akim. Okay, here, the Buddha gives a description of himself. Uh, very familiar, you will encounter this description very often. Tathagata appears in the world in Arahan, perfectly enlightened, 
perfect in true knowledge and conduct, fortunate knower of the world, unsurpassed leader of persons to be tamed, teachers of devas and humans, the enlightened one, and the blessed one. So the Buddha starts with the description of himself, the Tathagata. And then how he teaches the Dhamma, that is good. In the beginning, middle, and the end, with the right meaning and expression. Okay, I think this is a good time to stop. Anything you'd like to add? We will continue reading this sutta next time. A quick summary of what we have read. We started off reading about good friendship and how the good friendship is actually an entire spiritual life, not just half of it. A conversation with uh, Ananda and the Buddha. And then we start to read the next sutta, talking about the four footprints of the Buddha, which we will continue reading next time. Sister Shomei, would you like to do the closing dedication? Okay, sorry, you muted. Hui Xiang, Yuan Xiao San Zhang, Zhu Fan Na, Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhi Ming Liao. Pu Yuan Zui Zhang, Xi Xiao Chu, Shi Shi Chang Xing, Wu Sa Da. Thanks, Sister Shomei. Till we meet again, we will be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have a wise Wednesday ahead. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.